Okay, so there's a few things I'd like to do for this Turn A Gundam Part 2 upload here. Firstly, I'd like to read out excerpts of an interview with Yoshiki Tomino from 2022. In regards to 2014's Gundam Reconquista in G, which has recently been repackaged as five feature films, I've seen much of the, the, the series. I haven't seen any of these features yet. I'm quite keen to in the near future. Tomino begins the interview with this statement. Regarding regarding Reconquista in G, he writes, Right now I have no choice but to despair for and humanity. That's why I wanted to make a work that I can leave to my grandchildren's generation. The interviewer decides to remark that, Last night I saw Overman King Gaina 2002 for a long time. Tomino seems surprised. Why are you watching this now? The interviewer replies, It just so happened that I decided to write a column. King Gaina has environmental issues and civilization theory as its backbone. Director Tomino has been searching for a theory of civilization for a long time, and I think the latest form is G-Reco. That's a, their shortened form of Gundam Reconquista in G. Understandably so. Yes, it became... This is Tomino speaking, excuse me. Yes, it became clear to me around the time of Tone A Gundam, 1999, that my talent as a playwright was decisively lacking. Therefore, it is my mental structure that prevents me from creating... Works unless I make such things, the global environment and the way civilization should be, themes. I decided, it may be true that my work, because of the theme of civilization theory, is monotonous. However, even looking at the current situation leading up to the war, I can only despair of humanity. Ever since Mobile Suit Gundam 1979, things I've been worried about are only becoming more noticeable. I can die in less than 10 years, but I think people who have to live for the next 50 to 60 years will feel terrible. I have three grandchildren. Ten years ago when I started thinking about G. Reco, it was just around the time my grandchildren were born, so I wanted to include in the work exactly what they should know as they grow up. Also, I didn't want it to be depressing because the real world is so harsh. If it was an extension of Gundam, it would have become a devastating work, so I realised that if we skipped about 3,000 years, people might change. If it's a story about recreating a new world from there, it might be possible to create a work that young children can work hard on. But to be honest, I want to make it a simple story about a prince and a princess without any of those themes. After all, performing arts should be fun as long as you don't think about difficult things, right? Yeah, that last passage there, he's referring to G. Rico, Gundam Reconquista in G. I thought it was interesting to touch upon where Yoshiyuki Tomino sits at now, and where a work like Turn A Gundam was, was kind of evolving toward what we see in Gundam Reconquista in G, where it's all um, message and allegory, and rather than displaying the brutality of war again because Tomino feels as though this hasn't worked he's trying to pen these fairy tales especially knowing that whereas teenage boys you know younger males were expected to be the audience for the old mobile suit shows in the 80s I think now he's hoping that you know his 10 year old well yeah his young, his young grandchildren up to 10 years old at this point in time are viewing Gundam Reeking Geese to NG and this quote from Tomino here is very vital I think I'm the kind of person who watches movies without worrying too much about the lines. Even in foreign movies where you can't catch the lines, you can distinguish between good movies and bad movies. In other words, the most important thing in a movie is the sense of rhythm. Since I can't write lines for a play, I put a lot of importance on the sense of rhythm. Tomino, you get it, you genius. Tomino endorses AOD's manifesto. Well, there is no published manifesto, but the kind of ethereal manifesto we've been speaking about since, what was it, like March 2021. Delightful. The interviewer makes a remark about how G. Rico had a kabuki feel, and so he's searched the internet for people who felt the same way, and he's found these references to Tone Gundam being a uh, potential for a great stage production. Tomino says, What I personally like about Tone is that I was able to do a gender theory. What's wrong with Laurent dressing as a woman? More than anything else, I like turn A, which is full of desires like the two princesses look exactly alike and I can't tell which one is which, so I want to undress both of them. When asked what it has to do with Gundam, I can only say it doesn't really have anything to do with it. Laughs. That is what it is, okay? Wow, okay. However, what really pisses me off is that even though I want Takarazuka, the opera company, to make turn A a stage play, I haven't received any offers at all. What the hell? You kind of have to... Kind of have to ask. What? After all, later Diana's setting in Tone was aimed at Takarazuka. Diana Sama and Lauren Kun appeared dressed as women. Why didn't Mr. Takar Takarazuka come? Mm. I don't mind if a female actor plays male Nguyen. 
game. I, can't, I never pronounced that correctly. I really want Takarazuka-san to turn it into a stage play. I think there is a theatrical element in anime. Tone is based on Kaguya Himen, Torakaibaya, Monogatari, so it could be said that it is the most theatrical of my works. By all means, I would like Takarazuka-san to turn Turn A Gundam into a stage play. There is another reason why I speak so enthusiastically because my teacher, Osamu Tezuka, is from Takarazuka City. What is more important than anything else is that there is a sense of the times that theatre people no longer feel resistance to the subject matter of anime. Right now, you're doing Nasuka of the Valley of the Wind in Kabuki, right? Animation has also joined the ranks as a member of the performing arts. If I receive an offer from Mr. Takarazuka, I will immediately accept it, and I will not place any orders on the content. I just want you to take a peek at the rehearsal scene. There is a book published titled Maid Gundam, which is Sid Maid's illustrations and concept art for his work on Turn A Gundam, and Yoshiki Tomo and I wrote the foreword for this publication. I'm going to read out some excerpts of an English translation of this foreword. I'm sure that readers will gain the insight they seek if they look through the process and the final product that is in this compilation. There's really no need to add details about that. I'm going through the pages of the process. People who are in the inn will easily come to see where there were any problems. If you don't see it, then it just means then you don't really have a trained eye. A few points need to be made, though. One thing I want to stress is that it's really exciting to work with someone who comes from a different culture and to really feel that difference. I learned that any limitations in our perspective that cause problems are personal, petty. These personal issues are really the results of holding a culture dear to yourself after living within a society in specific structure. Our values are not definitive, yet we need to live by them. After all, what is life if we don't stick to our beliefs? Life may be that way, but the creative process is something else. Every action comes of its own effect, so that something new comes out of it. It is impossible to do so with a narrow mindset or attitude. If you look back on history or think about anyone you know who comes of endless potential, that person is probably free and without conditions or restrictions. Otherwise, if someone doesn't have talent, then they can create something new by looking for new inspiration. The ordinary person does this. Let's take the Japanese artist Kai, Kai Higashiyama, who passed away last year. Before World War II, he went abroad for two years in Germany to study Western art history. This experience allowed him to explore Japanese art for a new foundation. The Japanese military Zero Sen and Yamato are also great examples of how Japanese people took upon Western technology as a new resource and brought it back to the land of the rising sun. Nothing is really original in this way. There's nothing really novel about this kind of human pattern. Apparently, though, it hasn't occurred to the people involved in today's Gundam world. The Gundam design hasn't changed in 20 long years. This could be because people are afraid of change or are avoiding the challenge. Most likely, they have completely exhausted their imagination. The bottom line is this, unless they are genuinely a genius, there is nothing that one person can claim as their original work. To sum it up, we really needed to bring in a new kind of martial arts. I truly believe that residents of Tokyo live in a catalogue world driven by specs and regulations. That's why it's easy to forget that change is a good thing. I only know this for working with Sid Mead. Same goes for Mead. I'm sure there were times when he had a fit too, alone in his studio, screaming, those bastards from Tokyo. The number of times he didn't pick up his phone is proof. Maid was able to understand the greater themes of Tone A, and yet as a joke, he referred to the series as Tone X. At least we interpreted it as a joke in Tokyo, and started using the term Tone X also. These are some of Sid Maid's comments about Tone A Gundam, and his involvement with it. When I received the offer to work on the new Gundam project, I flew to Japan, met Mr. Tomino and the other Sunrise slash Bandai staff. I gained the insight and input of Mr. Tomino himself regarding the story, the ideas surrounding the series, and the mobile suit designs for this new project. I met with Mr. Tomino, his wife, and his daughter at a private restaurant in Izu, and dined on Kaiseki Ryori, a traditional multi-course Japanese dinner. For the past 20 years, I've met with the mobile suit designer in his home slash studio in Tokyo. My job was to create the new Gundam mobile suit that was zero based and completely fresh, one that would be accepted globally by anime fans and even by the harsh Japanese despite being almost unrecognisable. It was an incredible honour to be asked to practically redesign the story and characters of the most notorious series worldwide in anime. With the help of Mr. Inoyu and the talented Sunrise slash Bandai staff, I was able to complete the designs of seven sets for the Tone series. Mr. Horiguchi from Sunrise was my window to the Japanese side of studio design. The series aired and received very high reviews. My involvement with the Sunrise slash Tone groups was an incredibly enjoyable time in my life. As a professional, I was constantly on edge and excited. 
between the Japanese culture, my life and meaning of living was heightened. I'd like to stress again that I could not have done any of this, found any of the resources I was utilizing here without the brilliant fan site Moon's Cocoon dedicated to Turn A Gundam. Uh, if the web pay master of that particular site is viewing this, I thank you tremendously. I, I cannot thank you enough for the resources you've gifted to the rest of the world for this brilliant piece of work. Kone Gundam is one of the greatest masterpieces which Yoshiyuki Tomino ever gifted to the to the species. I'll link Moon's Cocoon again in the description as I did with my last Tone Gundam video. Do check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching if you have done so. But most importantly, do have the best possible day, night you have ever imagined.